Welcome everyone to our Monday night shiur. Today is the ninth day of the Omer, which is one week and two days. Yom Givura, Shabbat Givura. Today is also two days away from the Hilulav, none other than Yoshua bin Nun, the student of Moshe Rabbeinu who took Am Yisrael into Eretz Israel, the great grandson of Elishama ben Amihud from Shevet Ephraim, the Nasi of Shevet Ephraim. He was Mashiach ben Yosef of his generation, the destroyer of Amalek. The Pasuk says, Vayachalosh Yoshua et Amalek vet Amo lefi Kharev. Yoshua weakened Amalek. Why? Moshe, you're going to war with Amalek. Already finish them off. Rashi says, you gotta learn Rashi. Rashi says, Al Pia Dibur. Hashem said, Now is not the time to finish off Amalek. They have a purpose in the world. From here we understand that even the Tumah and the Tahara both have are not controlled by a Kadosh Baruch himself. A shiur today is uh, <coughs> sponsored the Ilun Nishmat Burcho Batzara Yair Ben Sara Uziel Ben Chsia and Elaza Izik Ben Tamara Ruach Hashem Tinichem Began Eden Amen. Amen. Our shiur is also the food has been given by uh, Mama Schnitzel. You ain't holy until you have a mama. Okay? No holy Schnitzel. We need the Mama Schnitzel over here. All right? Whoever understands, understands. So whatever the case is, today we have Parashat Shemini. Parashat Shemini, the eighth day. We know in Judaism we have some numbers that are very holy. Seven days of Shabbat. Seven days of Shabbat. Seven years of Shemitah. By the way, this coming year is a Shemitah year. Whoever is going to Israel, I suggest to you to be careful. Learn all the halachot of Shemitah before you go this coming year because you could go over Isurim of Shemitah. The Oraita, there's a lot of Isurim over there. If you're eating from the wrong place and the wrong thing, you have to know what you're doing over there. Seven days, what else? Of Tahara. Everything in the Torah is seven days of Tahara. Seven days of Tahara. Seven days of Tahara. But in the Torah, we also have the number eight. Of the eight, those are the major things above the Teva, as we all know. Eight days of Brit, Mila, above nature. Eight days of Hanukkah, Hanukkah. Hanukkah is eight days, the eighth day. It wasn't Zot Hanukkah. And it's very interesting that the first Kohen, let's see who knows over here, who was the first Kohen in Kali Israel? Huh? Abraham. Moses, Moses was the first Kohen, not Aharon a Kohen, his brother, Moshe Rabbeinu, but he was supposed to be the only Kohen. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him, go take Am Yisrael, he says, no, my brother Aharon is going to be a bit uh, jealous. So what did Hashem say to him? No worry, Aharon is going to see you. He's going to be happy in his heart. At that moment, Hashem gave the Kihuna to Aharon and the Livia to... Moshe. Moshe. And how many days was Moshe the Kohen? For how many days? One week. One week exactly, seven days. After the seventh day, Hashemini. And it was on what day? The eighth day. So this parasha is everything is above the Teva. For example, this parasha almost 90% of the time comes after Pesach, Pesach Passover. Oh, 99% of the time. This Shabbat, there is a Sigula for Parnassah. Why? This week, after this week, after this Shabbat, it was the first time the man came down to Klal Israel. The man came down in the month of Iyar. Iyar, it came down. That's after this week. It's going to be the month. This week is Mashal Mevorchim. We're going to bless the new month. There was a big rub. I was Zochet to Daven at his kever. The Baal Ohev Israel. He was, he said, this Shabbat, the Shabbat after Pesach, you have to bake a challah in the shape of a key. Because this Shabbat holds the key to your Parnassah. This is this Shabbat. This is the Baal. Uh, he was the Aptarov. The Aptarov, that was his name. He has a book called Ohev Yisrael. Ohev Yisrael, the love of a Jew. He's buried right next to the Baal Shem Tov. Baal Shem Tov is buried over here. He's buried right over here. He writes that you have to make this Shabbat, a sigula by Parnasa, to bake a chala in the shape of what? A key. And that shall hold the key of your Parnasa because in the month of Iyar, it's interesting, in the month of the Omer, the month of Iyar first come down what? The man from the Shemaim. 
And whoever says Parashat Haman every single day, I try to do that. Sometimes it doesn't always come out, but I try. Whoever says Parashat Haman, the Parashat of Man, every single day, every day. Every day. Muftah. Every, what does the word every mean? Every day means every day. On Shabbat. On Muftah lo shelo yechseru lo mizanotav le'olam. It's promised to him that his mizanot will never be reduced in his life. Amen. That's what whoever reads Parashat Haman every single day. But, Rabbi Chaim Vital, the student of the Ariya Kadosh, he wanted to say Parashat Haman before Shahari. You gotta pray for the guaf before before you talk to the or else you're not gonna be uh, calm. Yeah. Ari says you can't do that. First you daven, and then at the end of that fila you can pray for what? Parashat Haman. And this is what I try to do. Ashkenazim are very machmirim on this, by the way. They're very machmirim Parashat Haman every single day. That's why they have the papirimos. So therefore, that's happening this week. This is a And what's this week's parashat? Shrevaisai. Vayehi beyom hashemi ni. It was on the eighth day. Now something interesting before we get to get to the number eight that I want to get to. We said eight is Hanukkah. Above. Whoever wants sigula on the eighth day of Hanukkah, you could reach all the sigulot. For eighth day of Brit Milah. What do people do on the eighth day of the Brit Milah? They say the biggest sigula when a child starts to cry. What do they do? Da'avit to HaKadosh Baruch on the eighth day. There is another eighth day, which I'm going to... Whoever could... Let's see, whoever could uh, guess it before I'm going to get to it. There's another number eight in the Torah that's very special. It has to do with Tahara. On the eighth day, Tahara. Uh, on this eighth day, it's Misuga. Let's see, we got it? Nida. And then when does a Nida dip inside the Mikveh? On the eighth night. She dips on the eighth night. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about El Chot Nida. A little bit about stories Nida. Why? Sfirata Omer is how many weeks? Seven. seven weeks. Seven, These seven, seven weeks, there is a machloket in the Rishonim. The Torah says, Usfartem lachem. You have to count the days of the Omer. Yes, that's what we do. There's a machloket in the Gemara by the Rishonim too. Is the, is the counting of the Omer the Oraita or the Rabbanan? In our days, why? The Omer was coming to do what for us? What was it coming to do specifically? The Omer. It's coming to Matir, Kemach, Yashan. The Chadash to Yashan. Today that we don't have a Bit HaMikdash, the Omer should be what? The Rabbanan. But many Rishonim, like the Rambam, the Chule, all hold that the Sfirata Omer today is a separate mitzvah. It has nothing to do with Kemach Yashan and Kemach Hadash. Yes. Counting the Omer has to do with getting to Shavuot. Why? When you have a birthday. If I say, oh, Mazal Tov, it's your birthday today. Okay, you were excited for a minute. But let's say I say in, in a month is going to be your birthday. You start counting the days. Tomorrow, then tomorrow, then tomorrow, then tomorrow. Next day, next day, next day, next day. So too with the getting of the Torah. Getting the Torah, we all got a birthday. What was the birthday? We all became a nation on Shavuot, the 6th of Sivan. So when we say we're counting one day, two days, what are we counting to, uh, Avraham? What are we counting to? We're counting to the getting of the, the Torah. So we have to get excited every day. Another day we're getting the Torah. Another day we're getting the, We're getting closer to getting the Torah. Closer and closer and closer. Till on Shavuot, we're supposed to be so excited that we don't, st that we don't go to sleep that night. If a person doesn't go to sleep that night, Ariya Kador says, What? It's promised him, Hashalom. It won't happen to him any indirect, weird death that year. It's such a big promise from the Ariya Kador. It's unbelievable. So, therefore, we count the days. We count. We're getting to Shavuot. So, one of the Chachamim says that the counting has to do with the Kitsirata Omer. There is no Korbana Omer. There is no. Sfirata Omer, it's all Deraba Nan. But one Chachamim says, no, it's not Deraba Nan. Even today, it's what? Deoraita. De now, there is a Zohar. The Zohar says, whoever misses a Sfirata Omer, he has a very big problem in his Neshama. He has a big problem. Why? These days of the Omer, we're counting the Kinyanim of the Torah. There are certain kinds of Kinyanim, Midot. Certain kind of attributes to, to be Zochet to Torah, you need those attributes. Anav, Savlan, Nalaka Asan, you have to be patient. Whoever is missing the Omer, it means what? He's missing one of the secret days of getting the Torah. He has, a very, has to do a very big Cheshbon Nefesh. He has to look inside his Nishama. What is he? Rabbi Avraham. He has to look what is he missing in his Nishama, why he missed the Omer. By the way, there's big Tamid Chachamim that missed the Omer too. They miss it. Remember, being smart doesn't mean you're a tzaddik. Being smart just means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave you a big vessel. 
what you put inside that vessel is already up to you. That's your bichirach of she. That's why as a teacher, I'm a teacher in a school, for good or for bad, and I see a kid that's very smart. And what do I see usually in the kids that are smart? As much they're smart, their egos are ten times are yeah. ten times bigger than that. What does that mean? The kli is big, but the shefa is missing over there. Nobody gave them the nice. Uh, that was today's chokli shel, by the way. Uh, do not waste the shevet. You know what a shevet is? Shevet you know, is a baton. Is a baton. Shlomo Amelech says, I don't want to go to jail for saying these words. Sometimes you have to use a baton to put the kid in the right spot. You got to use a baton. And you know what? At the end, he's going to thank you. Absolutely. At the end, he's going to thank you. Of course, every kid with his right, with his right uh, parents, with his right kuah, with his right tikkun. However, a person should know everyone needs a person to put him in. Or else, why would the Torah say, Hocheach, Tochiach, et Amitecha? Rebuke your fellow, but finish the sentence. Right. You got to do it in a loving way. You can't embarrass him while you word, do it. There is halachot, how you rebuke. Rabbi Akiva, in his generation, he said, I wonder if there's anyone in my generation that knows how to rebuke his fellow Jew in the right way. Abaye also said, in Masachat Erechin, I wonder is there anyone in this generation, Abaye, who knows how to rebuke somebody. That's what Abaye said. Anyways, the Zohar says the counting of the days of the Omer and the weeks of the Omer are two separate mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. So when I say, Hayom Tisha Yamim La Omer, that's in one mitzvah. Shehem Shavua Echad Ushne Yamim, according to the Zohar only, that's a separate mitzvah. The Zohar is a big man, the Omer was written, it was said at least verbally by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. That means if Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said something, it's like a Tana said something. He's a student of Rabbi Akiva. Therefore, when you do it, at least according to the Sod, you're doing two mitzvot, and according to the Zohar, it's the Oraita. It's not the Rabbanan counting the Omer. Now, why do I count the weeks, say the Omer? What's the connection? If counting the days of the Omer is to count how to get the Torah, why do I count the weeks, says the Zohar? The Zohar says in Parshat Acharyemot, I count the weeks because these weeks is the only time a man counts how to be pure from his Tumat Nida. We also have a Tumat Nida. Every year when it comes after Pesach, Pesach the Seder finishes, we all get in ourselves the Tumah of our forefathers. Mm -hmm. Automatically. Automatically it comes back to us. And we have to work now how to get back to that point that our forefathers were when they were in Har Sinai. And it's very tough. Why? It's the only time the Torah says, whoever could tell me where in the Tanakh there's only one other time it says this language, I give you guys two checks. Two checks. It says, by when we got the Torah, they were on such a spiritual level during the Sefirat Omer. It says, Vayichan Yisrael Neged Ahar. And they encamp the Jews by the mountain. But when it says when they encamp, Judaism is a very interesting language. You could talk in the plural sense, and you could talk in the singular sense. When God speaks about the Jews encamping by the Har, it as says one. to them as one. They encamp as one Keneged Ahar. Who here can tell me? If you know, you know. If you don't know, you're never going to know. If, who here can tell me where in the 24 books it says that they were one? I'll give you a It comes right before Passover, but you have to tell me exactly where it says it. That they were one. Yamsuf is in the middle of Passover. That's it. You got your chance. Finished. Next. Shmini. Purim. Where in Purim? When they fast. When they fasted? No, but you're close. When close, they, but no they, cigar. Exactly when they wrote the Megillah. When they wrote the Megillah. Kimu v'kiblu. If you look in the, in the Megillah, it doesn't say kiblu in a plural. It says v'kiblu in the singular. All the Jews accepted the Torah. And what's the connection? By Har Sinai, they got the Torah shebikhtav with love. By Purim, they got the Torah sheba'al peh with love. That's the connection by Kimu, the Kiblu Ayudim, Purim and Pesach. And interesting, they both start with the letter P because they all have a connection. Torah, you have to learn with what? The P. Everyone says, we hear Shiurim. Shiurim, you don't learn with the P, you hear with the Oznaim. You also have to open up your mouth. What does it say? By the Seder night with the kid who doesn't know how to ask the question. The Lubavitch Rebbe used to say, there is a fifth chair, right? Yeah, my brother said this in the Seder night. There's a fifth There's a fifth son. That's the son who doesn't show up at the Seder at all. <laughs> but what does it say by the fourth son? That he doesn't know how to ask the question. At petach lo. What's petach? <laughs> open. What does the letter petach uh, start with? Pay. Pay. You got to open. The letter pay is to open. And we got to open up the person. And in the letter pay also starts the, the nikuda patach. 
What's the other color? Ah, patah. And the patah is a straight line. You gotta open up the mouth. <laughs> Everything here. Ad patah. Patah Eliyahu Anavi Zachor Latov Amar. We think Bukhari used to say just for nothing. That's the reason why they used to say. We just forgot the reason. You understand? The old Bukharians before they used to do this, they say Leshem Yehud Kuchav Rechush Chinte. They didn't know what they were saying, but they used to say Leshem Yehud. What did we read on the eighth day of Passover? Kol HaBechor. I say we don't read Kol HaBechor. We read Kol HaBukharim. That's what we read over there. That's the eighth day of Passover above nature. Anyways, back to the seven days of the seven weeks of the Omer. Those seven weeks of the Omer, whoever doesn't miss a night, and he's able to count seven straight weeks, he is able to fix his nishama that year from the Tumat Nida. Of the whole Kalal Yisrael. Wow. And if he's able to do that, it's a siman from HaKadosh Baruch Hu that his nishama is on a good level. It's on a good level. However, once he gets to Shavuot, what happens on Shavuot? That's the eighth day. That's the Jubilee. That's the 50th. That's the eighth. Vayahi beyom hashimini. What happens on the eighth? On the Bina, on the Shemini. What happens? If you're worthy on the eighth, and you work on yourself, you get the Torah. But if not, what happened to Nadav and Aviyu on the inauguration of the Mishkan? But that's a esh milifne Hashem. The fire comes out from Hashem and they burned them. Kalil. Why did they burn them? Look in the names of Nadav and Aviyu. The first one, the brother, Nadav, he was the, he was the, he was the main one. Nadav is Nun, Dalet, Bet. That's going to be, Nun is 50. Dalet is four, bet is two. How much is that all together? Forty-eight. Huh? 50? Fifty-six. Fifty-six. How many letters are there in Nadav? Three. Three. Fifty-six plus three is how much? Fifty-nine. Gematria Nida. And what does it say after they passed away, Rabotai? It's the eighth day. The eighth night. Tumat Nida. What does it say? Vayidom Aharon. I want to tell you guys one secret. You want a sigula of sigulot? When a Yisurim come to you, Vayidom Aharon. Gung Show. Don't say anything. That what's the best show in town? Gung Show. That you have to learn how to accept it. Be'ahava. Vayidom. Now look at the word Vayidom. What's the word Vayidom? Vav. Yud. Dalet. Mem. Gematria. Nida. Nida. 59 plus 1. Why plus 1? That's this level of you. You can't just take the Kiddushah just like it. You have to work on yourself. You need the 50, 49 days of the Omer. You got to work on yourself. Whoever counts the Omer and he thinks, today is the ninth day of the Omer. I did a mitzvah. Emet. True. You did it. But if you didn't work on the Pirkei Avot, what do we read in the seven weeks of the Omer? Pirkei Avot. If you didn't internalize Pirkei Avot, what did you reach? You're the same person. You got another check in Shammai. But you didn't go up a level. You got a check. But you did your house stays the same level. By the way, in Shamaim in Gan Eden, there's how many Gan Edens? Seven. There is three Gan Edens. Gan Eden the Asiya, Gan Eden the Yitzira, and Gan Eden the Bria. There's three Gan Edens. Whoever passes away and he's a how you say, he only did the mitzvot in action. He didn't do it in Machshava and Dibur. He goes to Av Gan Eden the Asiya. In Gan Eden Asiya, it's good over there. But remember, he's going to look up there. And, and when you get to Gan Eden Asiya, you could already look what's above you. And you're going to look what that guy reached by learning Torah, by opening up his mouth at Petach. He opened up his mouth and he learned. And he's going to say, I want to get to Yitzira. He's going to go to Hashem. He's going to say, bring me back to a Gilgul. I says, you want to go back to Gilgul? You have to get married again. You have to have children again. You have to work for Parnasa like a dog again. The Gemara says uh, seven, uh, seven times in a person's life. A person is born, he's like a king. When a baby is born, <laughs> everybody wakes him. He's like, eh? he says one small voice, he picks it up. No, 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 no. Like, he's like, then seven he stages. Then he, yeah, seven stages. Everybody then he grows up a bit. What does he become? A PI, uh, PIG. He goes inside the dirt, in the garbage. He takes his own thing, he puts it in his mouth. He grows up a little more, he becomes a Gidi. Gidi. You know what a Gidi is? Uh, a Gidi is a goat, goat, booze, booze. He becomes a goat. He starts to jump from one place to another on top of the countertops. He grows and becomes 16, 18 years old. He wants to look good. He becomes a sus. 
Here comes a horse. So how does a horse? A horse looks good. He's majestic. He goes out. He's looking for the women. He's looking for his bazul. He's a sus. He grows up a little more. What does he become? A caliph. Why? Caliph. Hav, hav. Give me money. Hav, hav. Give me all my money. He starts to loan money from people. He starts to do this. He starts to... Then he grows up a little more. He becomes a monkey. Why? If he doesn't work on his midot, he becomes a zaken menaef. Everywhere he looks, he wants... Give me like a monkey he becomes a you say a, a joker right this is the kind of person he is so therefore a person has to work if you're not going to work in these seven weeks on yourself you're going to become like this like a sus like a gadi like a, like a, like an animal but if you work on yourself if you work on yourself what do you become malach hashem tzevakot you become a godly human being moshe ish ha elokim mechetzio lemala elokim mechetzio velemata ish Moshe, was, what did they say about him? He was half and half. From the waist up, he was godly. From the waist down, he was a human. Why? We say about the Ari HaKadosh, he was all godly. This Rebbe, godly. How come? See, that's secret. Moshe Rabbeinu, we say half and half. You see, a person has to know when to be godly, and he has to know when to be a human being. When a person needs to be in his house with his wife and kids for Shalom Bay, he has to play the game. He has to have, he has to give, he has to be, he has to be from the waist down a human being. But when a person comes to the Beta Knesset, he comes to the Beta Midrash, yeah. from the waist up, what does he have to be? He has to be godly. Yes, what I said before I go to the Beta Midrash, I become a different human being. I'm right now godly. And that's why your body, by the way, not just your soul, your body is a mirror image of Shamayim. Your body is a mirror image of Shamayim. Your skull is the mirror image of Keter. Your brain is the mirror image of Chokhmah and Bina. Your two hands are Chesed and Givura. Your body is Tiferet. Your two legs are Netzach and Hod. Your Brit Milah is the Yesod. And if you're Zoche, your wife becomes your Malchut. If you're Zoche, your wife becomes... That's why when your person sees his wife, he has to call her, not my wife. He has to call her my Shechina. Oh. Ah, oh. 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 <laughs> Imagine you come home. And that's the secret to the song, Eshet Chaim Mimta. Yes, Shlomo HaMelech wrote it for his mother, but that's where it ended. And when you go home to read Eshet Chaim, you got to look at your wife and you have to tell her, Eshet Chaim Mimta. Farachok mipininim michera. Batach balev balev. What do you have in the Eshet Chaim, by the way? You have 22 stanzas. And every single one of the stanzas is one of the Aleph. But you don't understand what you're doing when you're reading that. When you read the Eshat Chal, you're giving your wife the spiritual sustenance of the, of the Tipa, of the 22 letters of Hashem, Hashem, I Hashem. I you, you do it when you get married, and you do it again when, you, when you're with her, you give her the physical. Uh -huh. Also, when you get married, by the way, when what you get married, married under the Chopa. Get married. Get married. Get married. When you're under the chupa, when you give her the ring, you're giving her the spiritual sustenance. That's why the ring has to be round. All the chachamim say the minhag of Klal Yisrael to give what? A ring. Why a ring? Ashkenazim take it a bit too far. They make the wife actually go around the husband. Hakafo, they do over Simchat Torah. They do over there. But when you give your wife the ring, you're giving her the pnimiyu to her, uh, the or makif of her neshama, or makif. That's why when you say the ring, you say it's kavana. Harayad mikudeshu betabad zo. Okay, that Moshe Yisrael. What does everyone say? Mikudeshet, mikudeshet. Why the letter mem me mikudeshet? Why mem? There's five letters of Hashem's name of the Aleph Bet that they're the Sofiot. Mem Sofit, Nun Sofit, Tzadik Sofit, Pesach, Chazve. Which one is the toughest one? The toughest one. Mem. Mem. That's why in the Torah you only have one word, one word, where the Mem is a Mem Sofit. In the middle of the word. Where do you have it? In the Nevi'im. Ule Marbe Hamisra Ule Shalom Enkets. Over there, it's supposed to be a regular Mem. What does Hashem say to write? An actual, why a, why a mem square? That's a ring. The ring is a mem square, right? That's what it is. That's what goes right. When you're with your wife, when you do the mitzvah that night, you give her the pnimiyut of her nishama. And how much pnimiyut you give her, that's how much power you give her to bring kids to this world. If you give her a lot that night, l'shem yehud kuchav rechul shchideh, doesn't mean you gotta take a sidur in front of her and says, darling, l'shem yehud kuchav rechul shchideh. I didn't say to do that. You could do it inside your head, l'shem yehud kuchav rechul shchideh. You're giving her power inside that night to bring 15 children. Ah, said the light. But if you're gonna say, ah, it's all about me, about the animal, I wanna be a sus. What do you give? 
You give a little uh, something, something over there. That's why the halacha is that a younger brother has to respect his older brother. Why is that? Because that's what you give. The nishama that's given, the earliest, that's the, the how you say, the choiciest nishama. That's the nishama, that's the, that's the kiddusha, that's the tahara, right over there. That's the biggest one. That's a machlok in the guy. How about a younger son? Does he have to respect his older sister? That's already a machlok inside the poskim over there. But according to Kabbalah, yes, anyone that's older than you, you have to give them respect because they got the best piece of their parents. Nishama. Now all this is just a hakdama for one thing I want to say that to show you Rabotai that all this just to get to the eighth day. What's the eighth day? Helchot ni da. Everything is about nida Rabotai. These seven weeks is all about Abraham. These seven weeks is all about Elchot nida. How to be mekadesh et atzmecha. I want to tell you guys one thing. We say in our generation, in our generation, Baruch Hashem, we have mikvaot all over the place. And not just regular mikvaot. State of the art. It's my much state of the art. It's something great. Warm, this, that. It's a spa. There's some, I don't, I don't know, there's some mikvah. I think it's opening up in the city. Beautiful. But how about, you saw that one? In Brooklyn. It's in Brooklyn. I think Syrian. Syrian mikvah. I'm telling you, you don't even have, you don't need a balalit anymore. There is an intercom. Everything is like uh, like Siri, you know, Siri on the iPhone. Everything is speaking in to the you through the speaker. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking the about. Siri tells you to dip. They, they tell you to dip and tells you if it's kasher or oh, fasul over there. Yeah. See a strand of hair? Not good. Dip again. Lay seven mikvaot. Everything is nice. All this is hakol tovi All very nice. Halachot! Do we know that I had a case this past week? A student that I taught. They were out on a trip, trip, nida. I remember, nida is all, if you keep nida, I'm telling you, you could assure yourself good kids. You could assure yourself kids who are tzadikim. You could assure yourself that if you and your wife keep the helchot nida because you go above nature, you're in the Yom HaShemini. I'm gonna tell you something crazy. I was inside, that, 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 that kid was in the place, and here there is a halakha, a very special halakha. When a woman goes to a mikveh, she's not allowed to tell anyone she's going tonight. It's not supposed to be a show. It's supposed to be something private. It's be a private thing. When a woman goes to a mikveh, it's a special night. She's mekayem mitzvah mideoraita, mideoraita. On the eighth night of her mikveh night, of her counting night, just the bit That's why oh, for clean the number one mistake women make is counting the seven days. When I have a count, when I have a chatan vekala, which I don't like to take, I don't like to take. I just don't have the time. I always tell my wife when you teach the kala, first and foremost, you have to imprint inside their brain how to count the seven clean days. It has to be imprinted. Not remembered or memorized. It has to be imprinted, stamped, engraved. Thank you, Abraham. Inside their brain, how to tattoo to the mat, how to count seven days. Why? A nida who dips inside that mikveh even a day earlier, she's still a nida. Ah, how the, the she's still a nida, still chayav karet. A zava, by the way, a zava is a higher sense of tuma. We do all right, and when she has to dip, on the seven. But a nida has to dip on the eighth. On the eighth, she has to dip. On the eighth night. It's more chamur, it's more mekel in one point, it's more chamur on another point. Now, a woman that's a nida. So the, the night, of the 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 night which is the eighth, it's really the eighth. Ah, so so right. if she makes a hefsek tahara Monday afternoon, she goes to the mikveh next week, Monday night. Weeks, you understand? We Has to be, huh? We have Only lechumra, not lekula. Only lechumra, not lekula. women, what do they hold? They hold zava, all the halachot. They hold zava, but they hold mikveh nida. You know she's a nida or a zava. She doesn't know she's a nida. We hold b'safek she's a zava. I don't want to get into it right now. I'm they going to halakha now with the guys. Real quick. Wait, real quick. The numbers is like this: a woman, a woman, 
and this is, I hope this is going to be understood the right way. I'm not here to teach halakha, I'm just here to awaken you guys during Sifirat Omer to reawaken yourself in these halakha because they're very kshurim to these seven weeks of Sifirat Omer. A woman sees dam. She sees dam. Mm-hmm. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, let's say. She stopped bleeding on Tuesday. Tuesday, I'd say three in the afternoon, she stopped bleeding. Could she do have sex Tara on Tuesday? No. No, five days. Minimum. Right now. You want to trade seats? <laughs> Minimum, she has to count four days. For Sfaradim, Ashkenazim, five days. Why Ashkenazim are Machmirim five and four? This I need a board to show you guys. Okay, I'm not going to go like this right now. They're Makfid Ben Hashem Ashot. If he was with her, Ben Hashem Ashot. So maybe it's Safek Yom, Safek Laila. I'm not getting into it with you guys right now. Sfaradim follow Maran Ashulchan Aruch. She has to, add, even if she doesn't bleed on Wednesday now mm-hmm. or on Tuesday, she still has to keep Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Those are the days that she bled. Okay. okay? On Wednesday, she stopped bleeding because she already stopped on Tuesday, right? That's the normal woman. She bleeds to between three to four days. On Wednesday, before night. Shkia, not night, Shkia, sunset, Ben Hashem Ashot, Shkia, okay. sunset. She has to do a hefsek tahara. Checkpoint. This is where all the mistakes happen. Uh-huh. Checkpoint, right? Women think because she makes a hefsek on that Wednesday, she could already go to the mikveh next Tuesday night. Mm-hmm. So in reality, she never counted seven full days. She only counted six. That hefsek tahara, it's which is coming to prove that her makor, her uterus has closed, is not part of the seven days. Now, if I will tell you how many people make this mistake, your hair would stand. Ravovadia Yosef himself, in his safer of, uh, of Torah Tahara, had to write this down to say this is the number one mistake in Hilchot Nida. Number one mistake. So therefore, a person has to know, during these seven weeks, you have to go over Hilchot Tum'ah v'tahara. And if you do Vayehi v'yom ha'shemini, you're going to have kids that are above nature. You ever see a kid that in the Teva Shalom, he can't do Averot. He wants to. But he cannot. He has some kind of spiritual magen. You know what a magen is? Shield, 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 shield. shield. Those come, you know where that comes from? Mikveh. That comes from the Mikveh. I want to tell you a scary story. Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein says this story. He says, in Eretz Israel, one time, there was a lady, Ole Hadash. How do they say? Ruski. Haruski. Khundul. The Lavan Shebalevanim. Why the whites? Why the whites? Exactly. Like Yom Kippur. Lady was old, 60, 70 years old. She comes to the Hebra Kadisha. True story, no skaska. I don't tell you guys no skaska. 60, 70 years old, she goes to the Hebra Kadisha. You guys know what Hebra Kadisha is, right? Yes. Hebra Kadisha are the guys who take the tough jobs. They clean the body. Mitzvah 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 and they bury the body. Yeah. She comes to them and she says, My husband passed away. No kids. No Kaddish. No one to pay for the, for the burial. Now in Israel they have a rule. That city that you're in, they give you a burial spot. Hi. Are you Jewish? Because I know Israel. She said, yeah, I'm Jewish. Could you prove it? Okay, we'll go to Beit Din. Yeah, you got to prove you're Jewish. It's not Pashut. They go to the Beit Din, Ashkenazot Beit Din. Who are you? Chimon Soda, Barabam, Baradida, Jewish. Pashut, stamp, engraved, stamp, she's Jewish. Vayehi Beyom Hashemini. And the eighth day. Jewish. They're going to bury, no one's there to say Kaddish. Who says Kaddish if there's no one to say Kaddish? Hevra Kaddisha, the guys who are burying, they say Kaddish. Yeah. They're about full service. They're about to put him in the ground. The man's name was Heschel. 
Herschel. Tzvi. So the Chavar Kaddish looked once at us. You have to say it. Say Hesped. Hesped. What is Hesped? Eulogy. Eulogy. Before you put the person in the ground. Something good. But who knows? Nobody knows anything. And these guys are mad pisatis, as they say. Dosim. The woman cannot speak at a eulogy. The wife said, listen, we're ten people over here. Can I just say one thing? Yakta. Gav Mizana. Hi, they said. Old lady she was. No kids, nothing. She stood in front of the grave. And she said. Heshala, Heshala, my dear husband, I know what you're thinking right now. You're going to Olam Ha'emet and you have no kids. No one to say Kaddish for you. No one to do Yushvo for you. No one to do Mitzvot in your name. The big Averav, Nadav and Avihu, that they weren't, they didn't have children. The Gemara says, whoever doesn't have children, Chasva Shalom, Bimait had the mood. You're afraid you're going to Shamaim. I'm telling you right now, Heshallah, you have nothing to be afraid of. Forty years she looked at the Hebrew Kadisha. We lived in Russia. Forty years there was no mikveh. Forty years we were married. You didn't touch me even with your pinky. Wow. And when I got older, when we in the Soviet Union, when the Iron Wall fell, we moved to America. But I was too old to have kids already. Heshala, you have Olam Haba. And all the Hever Kadisha with tears in their eyes said Kadisha al Israel. No way. That's a true story. There is people out there, Abotai, that have the koah to hold themselves. Vayehi Bayom. Hashemini, they could hold themselves in these halachot. So many halachot, I want to teach you guys something today, but it's a bit past my bedtime. <laughs> so I want to say that our shiur today, our Torah today, should be Le'ilu Nishmat once again. Burchobat Sarah, Ya'ir Ben Sarah, Uziel Ben Kitziah, Elazar Izik Ben Tamara. Hashem May our words of Torah bring them up me gan eden at tahton le gan eden ha elion ve mala mala ve khani atson ve lomar amen rabbi hanania ve la kajia amen ata hakados ba yahu le zakot edi sa khaybal